Marinero, the sick podcast. We're talking football. NFL preseason one of three is in the books. NFL season starts, regular season that is, on Thursday, September 9th. Cowboys at Bucks. It's around the corner. And joining me, of course, Mike Farrell. And you can follow him on Instagram at Rivals Godfather. How you doing, my man? Good. I'm doing good. Football season's almost here for college and NFL, so you got to be doing good. Uh, you're right about that. It's a sick podcast, and the show is brought to you by Essentia, the world's only natural memory foam mattress. Go to myessentia.com slash sickpod and use code sickpod for a free pillow with your purchase, Essentia, beyond organic sleep. Mike, I want to start with quarterbacks with you. Uh, is it safe to say Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, these will be the three guys when all is said and done that we'll be talking about uh, most at the end of the season? Uh, you could throw Russell Wilson in there, I believe. Um, you know, I, I obviously very high on him and the Seahawks. But, yeah, I mean, Brady's team is loaded. They're, they they got everybody coming back. They're, they should be the favorites to win the Super Bowl, I believe. And, and right behind them are the Chiefs uh, with Mahomes. And then the big question is, you know, Josh Allen took a tremendous step up uh, in his play last season. Can he take a, another step forward and become, you know, that elite quarterback? Could he become the guy? Because Aaron Rodgers, we know, will be back and do well. Uh, but the Bills are really the question mark there because uh, Allen improved so much from one year to the next. I think he could be the franchise guy. So I would put Russell Wilson in there, though. All right, really. Uh, okay, so uh, give me one, two, three, four. Your list of number one, number two, number three, number four. You got to go Mahomes, I think, first. Um, I agree with you. It, you know, and then I would go Rodgers, you know, because of his body of work. I would go Russell Wilson, and then I would go Allen after that. And and it, it, it hurts me, it pains me not to put Tom Brady in that top four. Um, you know, but he is, I don't know, what's he, 58? <laughs> he's he's eventually he's going to catch up to him. I don't think he's ready uh, to have it catch up to him yet, but I, he's probably in the five to seven range with, you know, Lamar Jackson and the other guys. If you want to pick up an NFL jersey, any team or any sport for that matter, sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and more. Use code 615 for 15% off on all of their items. The past NFL draft was a draft, of course, that featured a lot of quarterbacks, and number one was unanimous, but a lot of people had the number three guy or as their number two or the number two guy as someone else's number four. It wasn't unanimous the rest of the way. How did you have it, Mike? I had it, obviously, Trevor Lawrence, one. Uh, and there was never any doubt in my mind about that. But I had Justin Fields, two. Uh, and again, this goes based on covering these guys since eighth grade and, and watching their development through high school and watching their development through uh, through college football and and knowing their work ethic and their strengths and their weaknesses. To me, it was a no brainer fields, too. But, you know, in scouting, what time, sometimes you just scrutinize too much. You didn't have a good game against Indiana. You didn't have a good game against Northwestern. You know, uh, they didn't win the national championship game against Alabama. So a lot of nitpicking. And then the Jets really honed in on, on Zach Wilson. I don't know why. I, I, he's a talented kid, great arm talent, got that Mahomes off-platform stuff, very competent, cocky kid. But they just were sold on him from day one. And then Trey Lance kept popping back and forth. There was some talk of middle of the draft. Then there was talk that he was going to be the guy that, that, that Sam Fran traded up for. Originally, people thought Sam Fran traded up for Mac Jones. Um, to me, I, I had it, you know, Lawrence Fields, and then I honestly had uh, Mac Jones as the third guy, and then the wild cards are, are Wilson and, and Trey Lance. And I'm not sold on them having success, uh, even though Trey Lance, I think, is in the best situation of the five with all that talent. As a guy who's a Jets fan from the mid-'80s, and I, I listen, I have to say, I, I don't know if I had much of a choice – it seems like their games were always on television. And so I grew up with O'Brien and McNeil and Toon and Gastineau and Klecko and the list goes on and on. And so uh, I'm, I'm as loyal as they come because I haven't dropped them yet. But I, I mean, I, I use the term fan loosely now. Are you telling me that they made a huge mistake by trading Darnold to draft Wilson? 
No, I think the Sam Darnold uh, era was over. You know, I wasn't big on the Darnold pick either. Um, I know he had a great Rose Bowl, and he has all the talent in the world, but I, I just didn't know if he was a fit for New York. Um, quiet kid, you know, a little bit off personality-wise. Um, and, and by that, I mean just sort of a little bit <sighs> weird. <laughs> like, not confident, not cocky. You know, Zach Wilson comes in, he's confident, he's cocky, he's sure of himself. That's what you got to be in New York. Sam Darnold's a little unsure of himself, I felt. Um, I don't think they should have stuck with him. I, I think they should have drafted Justin Fields. That's what they should have done. I mean, he was there at number two, obviously. Um, and, and, you know, he's going to be a great quarterback. And we're already seeing with the Bears, you know, Andy Dalton coming out yesterday or the day before saying, you know, Justin Fields is going to be great, but this is my time in Chicago. It's not. I mean, Justin Fields is going to take that job over in Chicago, and he's going to be a star. Um, and he slid all the way to, what, 11. So that's what the Jets should have done. They should have taken uh, Justin Fields. Um, is uh, Jimmy G going to be the guy when all is said and done in San Francisco by the end of the year? I don't think so. You know, there's a lot of hype about Trey Lance and how great he looks. And Trey Lance does look great in a pro day practice. Um, you know, he hasn't, hasn't played a lot of live football in a very long time. You know, played one game last year and struggled a little bit and, and plays lesser competition in college. Now, there's two ways to think about that. Um, Josh Allen played lesser competition in college, and he's fine. Um, you know, Carson Wentz, it, it caught up to him, or the injuries did. I think Trey Lance will be the guy uh, by the end of the season. Jimmy G can't stay healthy, first of all. If he can, he's got so many weapons for them to be good. But once he struggles, you know, the fans and, and, and media are going to start calling for Trey Lance because there's so much hype coming out of him from practices and scrimmages. Uh, that I think there's going to be pressure on them with the number three pick to play him. And and that could be too soon for him. And that could, you know, sort of, uh, I guess, delay his progression if he's put in too soon. It was a huge party in Tampa in the month of February, of course, when the Bucks won the Super Bowl. And there was a huge party in Tampa this summer when the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Super Bowl. So uh, for all your parties, sophistication, event rentals, live music, DJ sound systems, tents, chairs, Tables, decor, lightning, photo booth, TV screens, uh, your one-stop shop. We're to Montreal, so if there's ever going to be a huge party in Montreal, you know what to call, 570-5770. My question to you is, as long as Tom Brady gets the Bucks in the playoffs, does it really matter what kind of season he's going to have, and what kind of season do you think he's going to have? Um, I think he's going to have a tremendous season. Uh, obviously, they've got a lot of weapons. Everybody decided to stay for him. You know, the running game wasn't very good last year, uh, and I don't see a ton of improvement there. But the short passing game, and, and remember, you know, for half the season, Gronk was not Gronk. He had to get himself back into playing shape and, and back into becoming the weapon that he wanted to be. It took a little bit of while. Uh, uh, it took some time uh, to get some chemistry with Mike Evans. Um, you know, they've got Chris Godwin. They're loaded. Um, I expect him to have a very good season. You know, fantasy-wise, he's not the top quarterback to take. He's not going to put up 5,000 yards. He's not going to throw 50 touchdowns. Um, but from a NFL perspective of winning football games, he's going to have a tremendous year. But it's not it's not etched in stone that, that they're going to win the Super Bowl. Um, he's hard to beat, obviously, as we've learned over the years. Uh, the NFC – has some formidable teams. I think Green Bay is going to be very, very good this year. I think Seattle is going to be very, very good this year. And there's other teams uh, that could be an issue for them. And then you got to go to the, through the Chiefs or the Bills in, in the AFC. So, you know, for him to win again, it's not locked in. But I didn't think he would win last year. So I never doubt Tom Brady. Always mm -hmm. on him. And, and, and if I had to, you know, make a prediction on who's going to win the Super Bowl, I would say Tampa Bay just because of Tom Brady. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. But anyway, we'll, uh, we have plenty of time to revisit that because I'm sure our minds will change at some point this season, all depending on which team stays healthy uh, or not. But why don't we do this? Since you talked about which teams you think are going to have a great season, it's now prediction time. Once again, uh, one week of three in preseason in, it's now time to give our predictions. Rival Mike, and you can follow him on Instagram at Rivals Godfather. 
Rivals.com is the website. NFC West. Who takes it? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm guessing you're going to say Seattle. I do like Seattle a lot. I, I think it's a pretty good, you know, because you can't really. I wonder what, what, what Matt Stafford's going to bring to the Rams. You know, I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's the big one. Um, because they have a ton of talent. Absolutely ton of talent. And the Seahawks, I, I do like quite a bit. You've got, um, you know, a loaded, loaded conference with the Rams and San Francisco and all that. So I would have to predict Seattle. Um, and that's simply because I think Garoppolo gets hurt. I don't yeah. think Trey Lance would be ready. Uh, and, and I think, um, you know, Matt Stafford's not going to be the difference maker that the Rams need to, to surpass Seattle. And, and I don't think Arizona makes the playoffs. Um, wow. And, and I think that's going to put Kingsbury really in a bad position. And it's going to put Kyler Murray in a bad position as to, you know, is he a bust? Do we yeah. move on? What yeah. do we do? And I think Arizona is very intriguing in there. NFC South, I'm guessing you go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Got to. I mean, you know, the, 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 there's nobody else. I mean, the Saints are going to be – the Saints are not going to be good. Jameis Winston's not the solution. <clears throat> and, you know, Mike Thomas is, is a bit of a mess right now. Alvin Kamara is a great football player. Their defense is solid. Uh, Carolina's not ready. You know, Darnold's not the solution there. And, and Atlanta just have no defense. So it's got to be the Bucs. All right, moving along. NFC East, who and why? I'm going, I'm going with Washington. And, you know, not the Cowboys. Um, and I'm a Cowboys fan. But I'm going with Washington just because the defense? That defense. That defense yeah. is so sick. I mean, it's really the, the defensive line. People pay attention to Chase Young, but they don't pay attention to the others. Their interior line is amazing. They've got bookend defensive ends. They can tackle. They can cover on the back end. Um, I think it's going to be obviously a, a very pedestrian offense. They, they've got, you know, really one good wide receiver. Um, and not a lot of weapons there. But I think their defense is going to keep them in games. And, and I see injuries, you know, for the Giants. I see injuries for the Cowboys. And, and I really don't see the Eagles uh, with Jalen Hurts making that step. Well, 329 points against in 16 games. I mean, do the math. Uh, that's not giving up a lot of points. That gives you a chance to win every single game. All right, so... Uh, so far, you got the Seattle Seahawks in the NFC West. You have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC South. You have the Washington football team in the NFC East. And in the NFC North, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, I guess? Yeah, got to be. I mean, I, they could win the Super Bowl. I mean, they're so loaded. I, I honestly think I, – I know he was upset about the Jordan Love pick, um, you know, but they they – they got him Cobb back. They've got Devontae Adams, uh, who was thinking about leaving. The running back situation with Jones and A.J. Dillon is going to bust out this year um, if he stays healthy. There's there's no one else. The Lions are going to be horrible. Uh, yeah. The Vikings are going to disappoint, uh, as usual. Uh, you know, <laughs> Dalvin Cook's great, but Kirk Cousins is not the guy. And then the yeah. Bears, you know, they're, they're just – they're going to get better, but it's going to take a few years for Fields to get them up to speed. Gotcha. Before we get to the AFC, uh, you'll allow me to take a sip of my Cherry River Heart Seltzer. Only 90 calories, rival Mike, natural flavors, and no preservatives now available in Quebec grocery stores and at the beer stores. Here's to you, my friend, on this lovely summer day. <laughs> mm. It's the spot every time. All right. Okay, let's move right along. Let's go to the AFC to where one of the producers of the show Actually, two of them are huge fans. We'll start with the AFC South of the Tennessee Titans, where I love their running back. I don't think there's any better in the game. Their quarterback, I think, is a top 10, but closer to 10 than he is closer to the top three. Do you like the Tennessee Titans to win the division? Yeah, it's not a very good division. So we've already got the Colts with a quarterback situation. you got Quentin Nelson out for a bit. Um you know, I, I do like their defense. Uh, it's an athletic defense, but they're not going to be able to hang offensively. Um, the Titans, you know, adding Julio Jones, the defense mm -hmm. is a question mark for sure. 
you know, they gave up 439 points last year and, and scored 491. So they need to shore that up a bit. <clears throat> Houston could go 0 and 17. And and the Jaguars, you know, with a new yeah. a whole new coach team, quarterback, running back, and, you know, they, they could win six games, but no one's gonna touch the Titans in the South. AFC East, is anyone gonna give the Bills a run for their uh, for their money? No. Um I don't believe in Tua at, at, at Miami. I don't think he's gonna be I think he's gonna be a bust. Um Wow, it's time for me to sell know, his rookie cards, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't have bought him. Um, uh, you want to bottom it? That's eh? too much for him. No, nah, he's a story of my life. Cool. Bad investments. Lefty quarterback. Never buy anything of, about a lefty quarterback ever. There's been like two good ones ever. Uh, wow. The ball comes Makes off. Sense. They are, it, the spin is weird. The offensive line has to be shifted. Receivers don't like catching b- the ball with that spin. Um, he doesn't have tremendous arm strength. Jalen Waddle is going to be very, very good for him, but. They're not going to uh, challenge the Bills. The Patriots, I think, probably under 500. I do like Mac Jones' upside, um, but they don't have the talent offensively to hang, and then the Jets are the Jets. All right, so you can't do this to me. You just told me that I've lost all my money. So whose rookie card should I buy? Fields? Well, I, Trevor Lawrence is a, a no-brainer investment. Yeah. He's going to be a great player. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's going to be a gold jacket guy. I would think if you took a quarterback, uh, it would be Fields would be your second one. Um, and then, you know, I, I would take uh, Najee Harris. I think he's going to be spectacular for Pittsburgh as a, as a running back. Now, running backs only last like seven, eight years at most. Wow. Um, you know, but, but he could have a Terrell Davis type of career where he only plays like eight or nine seasons and still becomes a Hall of Famer. The one that I think is the toughest one to call, I think, is the AFC North. Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cleveland, Cincinnati. Uh, Probably not so much Cincinnati, but who do you got and why? Eliminate Cincinnati. I I have the Browns, um, and it's close. You know, I do like Lamar Jackson. I do like some of the additional weapons they've given them. I love their defense. Um, the Steelers, I'm not sure if Big Ben's past the expiration date on his career. Uh, I don't think there's a uniformity on that football team that's okay. going to lead them. Uh, and I think the Browns, man, I mean, that defense is very underrated. Uh, Miles Garrett's going to be a real problem. Um, the running game is just outstanding. One-two punch. And Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield's put up better numbers than Josh Allen in his career so far and, and nobody talks about him he's been very very serviceable and if he continues to take that step up the browns are winning it i'm gonna go with the baltimore ravens i can't wait for you and i to do this again so we can actually compare and in the nfc uh or the afc west i guess it's a foregone conclusion uh based on we have the kansas city chiefs being a front runner to win the super bowl uh you have tampa bay as your number one pick kansas city as your second I'm going to go with Kansas City as my first and Tampa Bay as my second. I guess you got the Chiefs winning the division? Yeah, and I think the Chargers take a step up. I think you're going to see Justin Herbert take that. That He was great as a, a rookie. He's another one if you want to buy a rookie card. Yeah. The guy. Um, he's going to take that next step. Um, the Chargers are going to start adding a little bit more, but, but Eckler is underrated. Keenan Allen's underrated. The Chargers will finish second. The Chiefs are winning this, there's no doubt. The yeah. interesting part is the Raiders. You know, John Gruden's under a lot of pressure to get some stuff done there. Um, I'm not sold on some of the draft picks they've had over the last few years, and, and I think they finished third. And the Broncos, you know, um, they're going to be last. I like their defense, but they just don't have the weapons on offense. Mike, always love talking football with you on the Sick Podcast. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Absolutely. All right, cheers. Mike Farrell. Um the Sick Podcast, of course, you can listen to it via iHeartRadio or follow us on all social media platforms. Those are some of his predictions. And now how about a future prediction from someone else? Someone who gets paid to do this. He's my buddy Cash. I run my stuff for Sick Picks. Brought to you by my bookie. All right. Make me some money, my man. You can place your bets on my bookie. Go to my bookie. Dot AG slash the sick podcast and use code sick picks for a 50% deposit bonus bet, win, get paid cash, Super Bowl pick. Are you ready to give me one? 
Guys, I have a Super Bowl pick ready. It's a good pick. I'm going to be honest, guys. I think there's value on it. I think they have a really good shot of winning it all. Uh, I'm coming out of the NFC West, guys. The San Francisco 49ers, 14 to 1 last oh. week, 13 to 1 this week. What does that mean, guys? We're seeing some money coming on them. We're seeing some sharp money coming in on the San Francisco 49ers. I think the line move is warranted. I'd have them 11 to 1. Guys, what happened with San Francisco last season? 6 and 10? Well, it's not a big surprise, guys. They lost their best D-line guy, uh, Nick Bosa. They lost their quarterback. They lost Mostert. I could go on, guys. The list is insurmountable. They literally had the most injuries out of any team in the entire NFL last year to go 6 and 10. I believe that's an accomplishment. Give me this team fully healthy, guys. Why have the markets changed? Like literally last year shouldn't be an indication of anything. The line shouldn't have moved. This is the 2019 Super Bowl team. A lot of people are going to say, well, what happens if Trey Lance busts? What happens with Jimmy G? Guys, I don't care. They're going to win with Jimmy G or Trey Lance. I, I, I see Trey Lance coming in halfway through the season. Even if he doesn't, I don't care. I think this team's going to win it all with Jimmy G. 14 to 1, 13 to 1, depending where you're getting at, guys. It's way too good of a line. My number, like I said, 11 to 1, 10 to 1. I also like the Super Bowl champion coming out of the NFC West. That's it. That's a sick podcast. I'm Marinero. Till we do it again next time.